afternoon. This is the video newsletter for Buy, Sell, Short for Saturday, February 19th. Uh, sort of a daddish day on Friday. We did have the major indices uh, close up on the day. The Dow up 60 plus. The Nasdaq was actually able to claw its way back despite Apple being down about 7 but for the most part, this options expiration was really a big snoozer ahead of a long weekend. Not really a surprise with the market closed on Monday. Really nice week for breakout plays. And, you know, the speculative money just sat on the sidelines on Friday. You know, there are going to be days like that. Um, you know, so for the most part, the market was dead. There was some retraces in some of our plays. But, you know, we're not going to get overly concerned about that. We'll see what happens come next week. Looking at the Dow 15-minute chart, you can see we just continue to romp higher. Uh, daily chart actually gives us a better idea. When you look at the daily chart, you go, holy crap, look how much this uh, market is up. But really, when you just look at it, back in December, or at the end of November, we were at 10, 9, 29. We're at almost 12, 400. So a 500-point move over the last, what, 10 weeks not that big of a deal, you know, it's been the perfect kind of rally, small little moves higher, which is why we've seen a lot of the speculative stocks act the way that they have. Now, I was reading a little stat this weekend, uh, we've gone an entire quarter now without the market pulling back 5 well actually, we haven't even pulled back 2% in the last quarter, the biggest drop being uh, when we had that little... Uh, Egypt crisis there where we saw almost a 2% drop but it's been a quarter now since we've had a 5% retrace and you know typically in bull markets that is typical in bull markets and it usually means we're going to see higher prices down the road now that doesn't mean we're not going to see a retrace and what we need to start looking out ahead on is you know politics are yet again going to raise their ugly head and we've got the GOP trying to stomp their feet like a spoiled little kid, trying to show that they're in charge and threatening a government shutdown here the first week in March. So the market is probably going to start to pay attention to that really, really soon. So that is one thing. You know, we're going to continue to play this market, but we're going to have an eye open for this possible little blip that could cause a retrace in the market later in this month. And we could see something similar to what we saw back in November. You know, we had the budget plan pass uh, the House today. And, you know, it's more of the same old, same old crap. They cut from the poor, they give to the rich. Ignored in the, you know, you've got the GOP out there, and I don't mean to jump into politics right now, but, you know, politics are probably going to play a little bit of, uh, a part if, we are going to see a retrace. And, you know, we have the latest budget plan out. Uh, GOP with the teabaggers are slashing the budgets right now, or trying to at least. You know, they're going after the poor. Uh, they're going after children, et cetera, et cetera. They're, of course, ignoring the huge tax breaks that we give oil companies. They're totally ignoring the large subsidies that we give to farmers. Um, you know, just look at the headline that's on Yahoo Finance. Uh, budget spares oil companies and farmers we've got oil sitting at 90 dollars a barrel do oil companies need tax breaks hell no we've got commodity prices at multi-year highs some of them at all-time highs you know farmers are raking in the money right now but hey you know let's continue to give them subsidies because they're a big power base for a lot of politicians so we're not going to touch that but hey let's go after the poor let's go after children you know let's go after after school lunches etc cetera, etc cetera, and let's you know chop the crap out of government now that is good to a point, but what we need to be aware of, we need to go back and look at history. We just came out of the largest or the worst uh, recession since the Great Depression, and a lot of things are similar to what happened back there, including the political environment we have out there. Now, back after we came out of the Great Depression, we had a fat rally in the stock market. We had a fat rally in uh, the economy. And a big driver was that government spending just jacked up. We had the New Deal, et cetera, et cetera. A lot similar to what we have now, except different names on it. And then, you know, in 36, 37, 38, 
uh, people, you know, polit politics got involved again and government spending was slashed. And what ended up happening is we fell into another recession. And the only thing that actually saved us then was World War Two. You know, and, you know, war is good for the economy, except, you know, the Iran or, or the Iraq war, which wasn't good for ours. But anyway, uh, so that is one thing to keep in mind. It's good to chop government, which is getting bloated right now. But, you know, let's you know, wait until the economy is really on a solid footing. Anyway, enough of that political crap. Uh, just something to keep an eye on out there as a possible reason for a retrace. Now, the market has been bulletproof and has ignored every other thing that's been out there. But, you know, this budget deadline, especially if the rhetoric really starts to fly over the next week or two, could be a reason for us to get a much-needed retrace in this market. Anyways, looking at the SMH... You know, we continue to stair step higher. You know, everything was a little weak. Volume was really, really low last couple of days. U.S. dollar has continued to pull back, which has kind of supported the market. Um, we'll have to see what happens uh, going into this week. Anyway, let's jump into some stock plays. WZE. A lot of stocks pull back on Thursday, late Thursday and into Friday. Volume's been really, really low. Long weekend, traders taking some money off the table, speculative money moving to the sidelines, not unexpected. We're right back down, you know, Wiz had some very nice news this week and didn't have the follow through, but we had a really good start on it. So support right now is that 50 day moving average, 26.4. So if you're looking to accumulate a position here, 27 cents and under is what we'll be looking at. And we're, you know, we're looking for a cup and handle breakout here this month. So very, very soon. BNXBanks.com. We had a fat little pop earlier in the week. And then over the last couple of days, really, you know, traders just taking some money off the table. Retraced that uh, gap fully there on Friday. So we should see a snapback this week. Remember, last year, this is exactly the time when this stock started going kaboom. We had a big run up in January into February, sort of retraced later into February, and then over the course of a couple of weeks, the stock went up 100%. So we're looking for a replay here. RSI back to support. Stochastics almost to oversold levels. So looking for a snapback bounce on BNX this week. ALVR, you know, this chart set up here, we saw, you know, across the board really on Friday. Nice pops on Thursday. No volume follow through on Friday. Again, you know, to beat a dead horse. Long weekend, speculative money just sitting back. Would we'll be looking for these to bounce again on Monday. Very nice chart set up here. First target is that 50-day, 200-day moving average up there around the 220, 225 area. And, you know, right sector, right time. Just a matter of being patient on the bounce. NLST. Uh, new trading alert on Friday. Uh, some of you guys have been around for a long time will remember we call this one a gem. What was it back in uh, 2009 when it was a 30 cent stock? You know, since then it's had a monster ride, retraced nicely. But we've got a nice little flag formation here. We almost got the breakout we wanted on Friday. We broke through that 258 level, but the volume just wasn't there. Traders just weren't interested in picking up new positions. That'll be different next week. Look for a breakthrough 260 to light this baby up. We're looking for, you know, two, a 200-day moving average break, and it's off to the races here with uh, stops at the 50-day moving average at 244. So we've got some decent upside here, nice flag formation. Tech stock hasn't really participated over the last couple of months. You know, these are the kind of stocks, you know, everything else is run, so we're going to start looking for these laggard plays. C-O-O-L, fat breakout for us this week. Just a monster. And one of the stocks that continues to drive this one higher, G-L-U-U, -U, broke out again on Friday. We're looking at a two-year chart here on Cool. And really, the next resistance level right now on that break through the 160 area is up there at $2. Uh, support right now. Actually, let me pull this one back. Uh, here's a closer view. Support right now, we really should not break probably below 147, 148. This breakout, I would expect it's going to continue on Tuesday. And the next level really on this one is the 175 plus area. So this should be a nice little mover for this week. IFON, we got a fat breakout on this one on Thursday. And then just no volume on Friday like a lot of stocks. 
and we had someone there trying to paint the stock. Every time there was a buy at the ask, there was a 100 share sell at the bid, and then, you know, they were able to game the stock with a 106 close on a 100 share print. I actually like seeing BS like that because typically what it means is someone's trying to game the stock, they're trying to buy it, and once they get their fill, boom time. So low volume retrace, we still have not had our positive MACD cross, so we've got that to look forward to in this upcoming week. Target 128 still, and you know we should find rock solid support at that 20 day exponential at 102. MCZ. Big breakout this week. It's been consolidating over the last two days. The way we're setting up here is sort of similar to what we saw when we had that big run from October into December. What happened was we had MCZ run big, consolidate for a few days, run big, consolidate, run big, con essentially a stair-stepping pattern. Sort of got muted here ahead of the earnings report, but again, we're back into that stair-step. Pop, consolidate, pop. Here we are in a consolidation, so I would suspect that Given a positive market Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday that we see MCZ break through that $2 level again and go on a nice little run. Now, if you're looking to pick up a position, would look to add a 2 break with 193 stops or you can wait for a 209 break with $2 stops and then a break of that 209, we could see a really quick pop to 220 to 230 area on MCZ. TSEM. This is one that we jumped into in the chat room. Semiconductor stock really has not participated in this rally at all. It's had some spikes and drops, but really, you know, hasn't gone on a run like we've seen on some of our other plays like LVLT, which I'll bring up shortly. Uh, nice bottoming action here. Double bottom, 135. Monster earnings report on Monday. Had a pop to 149 and then retraced back. 145 146 should break that downtrend line and what we're seeing a lot of recently is stocks that break these resistance downtrend lines have been going boom so let's see if we can get a similar follow-through on tsem this week stops on this one 139 140 depending on your risk tolerance just to mention lvlt perfect breakout for us 130 breakout over the last four days, we've got, you know, it hit 165 high, hit all our targets, really. I even mentioned in the video on Thursday that if you wanted to buy a break of 150 on Friday, 165 plus was your target, hit it on the friggin' nose, 10% gain in, what, uh, two hours. Cannot argue with that one. Uh, if we've got a positive market on Monday, you could possibly enter this one with uh, 140 stops. Maybe, you know, if you're able to get 145, 146 early Monday, trail your stops, five, six cent stops on this one and see if we can get a repeat run back to that Friday high. WEBM, uh, kind of a frustrating stock. You know, we let our money ride on Friday. This stock looked like it was going to go kaboom. Uh, when it got up there to 195 and then boom, rug got pulled, back down it goes. And it's been consolidating around that 167, 175 area since then uh, on really low volume. Stock is, you want to sell this stock the way it's acting, but I've seen stocks act like this before. They frustrate the crap out of you. And then all of a sudden you see it go boom. You know, it's over $2 just like that. So, you know, we've had a very good month. This is one. I'm willing to gamble a little bit on this one. I think it's setting up for a big breakout. I'd probably only get concerned if we had a close under the 20-day exponential. But even then, just on this setup, I think we're going to see a nice little run on this one this week on a positive market. And we're still waiting, really, for a big positive MACD cross here. So another big up volume day. Maybe we'll get a news release on Tuesday to light this baby up. Zibibibibib energy, ZBB, fat little breakout for us on Thursday. We got an early pop uh, Friday and then splat, you know, it was at 120, just like that. Kind of typical for this stock. You know, we've been trading this one since back in November, actually October, November, and it's sort of done the same thing. Pops, scares the crap out of you, gets the weekends out, and then goes pop again. Um, so let's see if we follow that same pattern where we get a pop drop pop and you know love the setup we have yet to get that positive macd cross we should see that on tuesday 
positive MACD crosses have been good for very nice pops. Check this one out in December. Stock went from 55 to 75 cents on its MACD cross. Back in October, uh, we went from, you know, what, 45 to 65 cents. So this is a stock, loves positive MACD crosses. Stochastics up through 50. Rock and roll time on this one. Quick mention on IPAS. Decent earnings report they beat in this quarter. The guidance was a little bit weak for the next quarter. Uh, not really a surprise because a lot of these deals they signed have yet to kick in. Stops, robots went after the stops. So check that l little candle there. I mean, they somehow they got it to test the 50-day moving average and then snapped it all the way back. Uh, love this stock for the medium term. We're going to see some action like this. Remember what IKA ended? It had a terrible earnings report. And, you know, similar sort of thing. Shuck it out, long tail bottom, and then slowly started to move upward since then. So we're probably going to see the same on IPAS. Uh, you know, if it did see a further retrace down here, you know, if it's managed to see 140 and under, we'd definitely be looking to pick it up for the long term. This is going to be a stock we're going to continue to play like we did our other gems. Just need to get this earnings, you know, whip shot, whipsaw, you know, out of the way and then off to new highs we're going to go. Probably the next area we're going to look for is a break through $1.60 would be our next buy trigger on this stock. Last but not least, real quick mention on ICOG. Actually, let me go back to the daily view here. Check out ICOG. Essentially, it's gone from $135 to $2 with, what, two red days out of the last, what, 15 red days. Just a very bullish move up here. What we're going to be looking for on this one is a break of two. If you jump in on this one on a break of two, $1.95 would be stop, 220 plus target. These fresh breaks of two have been the ones that have been rewarding the most. So this one will definitely be on watch on Tuesday and Wednesday for a potential breakout. That's it for the video. Uh, we've got some very nice setups going into this week. Uh, looking for bounce backs in WZE, BNX. We've got our new plays, NLST. COOL would really be surprised if we do not see a nice little pop on this one on Tuesday. And then the other plays really set up nicely. So, slow Friday to be expected after a very nice week. Enjoy your long weekend. It's nice to be able to sleep in on a Monday every once in a while. And I will see you guys in the chat room on Tuesday. Any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. And that's it. Goodbye.